So the, the last century has been viewed as the century of physics. Great discoveries of subparticles and cosmic uh, rays, um, leading eventually to this uh, informational uh, revolution that we live in now. Pretty spectacular. But most everybody agrees that this next century is the century of biology. And if you look at the, the media, you might get that feeling immediately. You see uh, claims about um, the, the genes make you do it, or uh, our genes are, are our fate, um, or many ads that have uh, a hidden helix in the back, lurking in the back of the ad. All the, uh, let those ad advertisers um, uh, encourage them to you the things that they're smart and know what's going on in the world of genetics. Well, um, this course is going to try to lay a foundation for understanding what's in your genes and what's not in your genes. Um, clearly, there have been spectacular uh, increases in our technology and our knowledge about biology. Now, our ability to sequence complete genetic information from thousands of organisms have led to incredible understandings of evolution that we really didn't have before. It is now inescapable that life arose only once on Earth, uh, and, um, and all of that life is based on the same genetic DNA code. And this gets reinforced and reinforced as we learn more and more about genomes of different organisms. Uh, but perhaps the most personal part uh, of this revolution will be how do we understand our genes compared to the genes in the world at large. Um, how are we each related to the world's population? How do our genes tell us about predispositions to diseases? Uh, how do we how do they guide us to use that gene information to make our medical decisions and to guide our health, uh, uh, healthy lives? <coughs> um, at the moment, newborns are automatically screened for about 50 different uh, uh, mutations, and in order to prepare for treatment of those kids when they are born. Um, but now we can sequence the complete information in an individual's genome for roughly the cost of what those, uh, those tests cost individuals automatically. So uh, soon we'll be able to take a sample of DNA from a newborn fetus, get its complete genome information, put it in the medical record, where it can be the cornerstone for future medical uh, decisions and future uh, uh, information about how that person might lead their life uh, to have a healthier outcome. So the same information as part of your uh, medical record uh, is likely to lead to a real revolution in how medicine is practiced, a more personalized medical care uh, that takes into account uh, that information in your genes. Now, of course, there are issues about, think, about uh, uh, common diseases and behaviors that are partly in nurture, partly in nature, uh, but that all has to be sorted out. At least we will have the information to look at the uh, nature of the part. Um, so we can get complete genome information on anybody easily now. The real problem comes in interpreting all that information. That's not the expensive part, but the time-consuming part, and is the focus of all the vast majority of the biomedical research that's going on at the moment. And it's enormously interesting to watch how that's uh, turned out. Um, so how are we all, how is all of this going to affect us personally? How do we make decisions? Um, Collecting and interpreting this vast amount of information on each of us raises many ethical, legal, and social issues. Uh, and it's really, I think, important for us to begin to understand how these benefits and implications of the are going to affect this person. So to understand what this is all about, we're going to have to do a first session dealing with the, the basics, uh, DNA, genes, and genomes. It's not so hard. Uh, it's really pretty straightforward. Uh, and I want to trace the, the, uh, the tools we now have available to us, starting with the molecular biology uh, in the 60s, going through uh, the, uh, human, uh, up to the Human Genome Project that gave us the ability to look at whole genomes. Then we can ask more interesting questions. Uh, what is nurture? What is nature? Uh, 
our behavior is genetic in origin. Why is cancer a disease of your DNA? How does epigenetics, the new catchword that you hear regularly, um, why do 40% or more of our drugs not work uh, as advertised? Uh, this is perhaps the new information in your genome. Can this technology perhaps save us health dollars? There's an opportunity for that. <coughs> Um, we'll have a guest lecturer, Lynn Jordy, who's chairman of the Department of Human Genetics, who will uh, give individual examples of the value of the incomplete genome information. Jeff Botkin will also be a guest lecturer. He's a bioethicist uh, who will deal with ethical, legal, and social issues related to this new technology. So the hope is that this course will take much of the mystery um, out of genomes and help you answer the question, do you want to know what your genes say or not? Thank you. <laughs>